Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hey guys, it's Blaze again. So I know last week we talked about my timing on goals that I want versus other people's timing or their goals and how it just doesn't work when you're trying to push yourself for something that someone else wants instead of something that you truly want. And this week I actually want to dive into the way that shows up, how you can understand what's happening and all of the nuances of what happens when you're out of alignment with what you actually want and need. So one of the ways it shows up is one, obviously, like you just don't feel great about it. It's like, you're like, why is it such a freaking struggle? Why is this so like pulling teeth and it's so hard and I don't want to do it. Now, sometimes we feel that on our way to a goal that we actually want. And that can just be, um, you're learning something new you don't know how to do it yet. It's uncomfortable. And I'm all about getting comfortable being uncomfortable because a lot of life is just not, it's not smooth. It's difficult. We make mistakes. It doesn't feel great to do that. But I think the difference is in the quality, like the timber of the discomfort. And there's a difference to me between feeling like I'm not great at something yet. And I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong and the discomfort that I feel when I feel like I'm doing something that I didn't really want to do. So there's the discomfort of doing something that I know I have to do to get what I want. And there's a discomfort of I'm trying to do something that I don't want to do to get something that I don't know that I even want. And the difference, it's like a slime factor almost. There's like a sludginess to the action there's a resistance to it. Even if like the action itself, you're like, Oh, I could easily do this. It's fine. I can do this. But then you show up to do it and you're like, Oh, but should I though? Like, why am I doing this right now? And that's one of the thoughts that comes up when you realize you're out of alignment is that you start questioning yourself a lot. Like, why am I doing this? Or should I be doing this? Whereas when you're in the flow and you're doing something that is in alignment with who you are and what you want to be doing and how you show up in the world in the moment that you're doing the action, There's like almost a feeling of bliss or time kind of goes away. Even if you don't know what you're doing, like you can just get into it and flow for a few hours and then you come up and you're like, whoa, that was crazy. I don't even know what just happened. I've got to reassess. That feels like wonderment. There might be some anxiety there again, because you're pushing yourself into a new zone. So as you're moving into a new zone of, I don't know, ability, a new zone of understanding, there can be some confusion and there's maybe a bunch of times that you pause and you're taking it in. But if you're feeling like it's not really making sense to you, why you're even there or what you're even going for or why it's happening, like that, that's your sign where you're like, why am I doing this? Why is this on my list of tasks today? And if your only answer is I have to do this or someone told me to do this, or it just seems like I really should, that's probably not the greatest indication that you're on the right path. (laughs) Um, Or at least it's not for me. I mean, there are things that I have to show up and do that obviously are not like really, really fun. I don't like to go to the doctors and get shots. Sometimes I have to, but when I ask myself, why am I doing it? It's usually not just like, well, like some old man on the mountain told me I needed to do it. Usually my answer is like, oh, right. Like I needed to do it because I want to be healthy and I'd rather, you know, get this health assessment done, get a pap smear, whatever awkward thing has to happen so that I don't get cancer and die. Totally worth it. Not the best experience for 20 minutes of my life going to this doctor, but at the end of it, I will feel like I've done my duty. It's worth it to me and my body. So there's, a difference again between like loving the experience but loving the result or appreciating what it's doing for you or just questioning the whole thing like i don't i don't believe in this i don't want to do it it's just like pulling teeth and i don't want to go if that's like it every time you really have to start to question like what why am i here what what is it serving 
Is it really what I want? And how is this goal serving me? Ah, yeah. So the goals that other people put up for you. I've thought more about this. And one of the things that I thought was interesting is that it doesn't necessarily even have to come from a specific person. I think there's a lot of cultural goals that are just out there floating in the zeitgeist. Like we just pick it up and we believe it. And it's just, we don't question it. We think, of course, that's what I want. That's what I'm supposed to want. So then there's like the family inheritance of what did your parents do and all the people around you and the people in your neighborhood that they never really questioned. They just kind of lived it. It was their lived experience. We inherit that. So, you know, my parents are still together. They work hard. I never got the impression that either of them enjoyed their jobs very much, but they had to do it. <laughs> you know, they have, they have what they're doing. Um, you know, you come home, you watch TV, like they just, there's the routines. And then as I grew up, I was like, oh, well, when you grow up, like you get a job that you probably don't like very much. You have to work because you need the money. You do it for the people around you because you care about them, but it's okay to resent them for that because I've kind of seen that around and you probably need to get married. And if you haven't done that by the time you're in your twenties, like something might be wrong with you because your parents got married when they were freaking teenagers. So get it together, Blaze. Like find your relationship. Like there were all of those things, even stuff that my parents had told me, you don't have to do what we don't believe is true. It didn't matter. I still picked it up just from what was around me. And then it's like, we have to work to deconstruct these strange goals and life things that just seem important. And I've noticed for a lot of younger people than me, I, I sound so old now, younger people, my God, in their thirties, <laughs> there's the thinking that having a home is super important or the less of a need for marriage, more of a need for proving themselves with how they contribute to society. Um, and like a sense of failure sometimes if they haven't gotten that together and if they aren't able to contribute to causes that they care about. And I think, wow, that's really interesting because I think when I was growing up, I don't know, I think moving out was very important. Having a house wasn't having the relationship was important. Um, marriage felt important. It seems less important to some other people now. It's just, it's fascinating to me because I watch how these evolve and change. And I, it seems to be in response. It's like a dialogue between the generations or whatever we grew up with. Like there's going to be a little bit of rebelliousness. Like we see what, what was an important value of our parents. And we look at it and go, what did they fuck up? And how am I not going to do that in my life? And then we work really hard to not do that in our life. And then we fuck it up royally in some other way hilarious and horrible. We're all guilty. <laughs> I, I stand in that truth. But there's also the ideals that we want to bring into existence that we didn't see championed. So we're like, oh, I just really felt like there was a lack of care about the environment or a lack of care about you know education or causes like that or equality. And we really want to contribute to that. And that becomes like the guiding force in our life of what we're like making the meaning of our life about. Things like that actually can be really deeply felt and can very much come from within us. And I think it's the ones that we're trying to grow. I think it's the things that we're trying to build that are coming from within us and the things that we're just trying to like assume the shape of. Those are the ones that we have to start to question and be like, well, why am I trying to get married before I'm 25? Like, was that really even a thing? Like, I was disappointed in myself that I hadn't gotten married by the time I was 24. Like that was a thing for me. And I look at that now, like with the perspective of, uh, of almost another 20 years and go like, dear Lord, what was I even worried about? Like you were so young, you barely knew who you were. You had so many problems. Like, it's really great that you didn't get married. <laughs> like freaking relax. Oh my God. But there was like a sense of shame. Like I had failed. And then, um, you know, I, I've lived in houses, but they weren't houses that I bought with my money. So like, there's all kinds of things that I didn't realize were beliefs that I had inside of me until they came up or until I felt the shame of not achieving them or the weirdness of like achieving them, but not the way that I thought I was supposed to. It's really fascinating stuff. So when you start to uncover these goals that you're like, are these even what I want? you kind of have to laugh a little bit and go like, okay, well, where did it even come from? And 
the question that works the best, I guess, is, is this serving me? If I'm really obsessed about having a house, in what way is that goal serving me? And in what way is it not serving me? And your answer could be either one. You could be like, oh, it serves me a thousand ways. Here's my list. Great. But if you look at that list and go like, I honestly don't even know. I I just like living in the apartment that I'm in and I like the freedom to travel and I don't want pets and I don't want that responsibility. And when things break, I hate it. What if it's totally okay that you like living in apartments? Like (laughs) these are just in my mind, easy things for me to grapple with now because I've already been through it, but I know are very, very real when you're in it. It's the same thing with relationships. It's the same thing with parenting, like whatever it is that we get really hung up on. And it's like a little button, like don't press the red button, but you just keep pressing the red button and things light up and it's very alarming and upsetting in your body. That's when we have to go, ah, there's something in there. It's trying to communicate to me that it it's not, it's not good. It's not good. So what is it? And if you can let go of your expectation about what your life has to be, and stop um, believing that you're not living up to something, I guess that's in there. Then you can have a conversation about what would you like your experience to be? I guess that's a lot to unpack. I guess I (laughs) like, oh man, am I going to leave you with like, just don't have expectations about life. Your life will be great if you just don't expect anything. Cause I don't really believe that. That's very nihilistic. (laughs) I think we should expect a lot of great things to be happening in life. But I think when we have big expectations around the how things have to show up. That's it. That's what I wanted to get to. If we expect how it has to show up, it makes it very rigid and it does cause those alarm bells to go off more and more often. And it's not a pleasant place to dwell. Pushing yourself into a corner and saying it can only happen this way and it has to happen this way adds so much stress. It just really does. And I'm a huge, huge fan of leaving it an open-ended question to myself, to my unconscious mind, to the universe, to just plug in some answers for me to go, I want this thing to happen and I don't mind how I get there. And I've even stopped trying to even dictate what the thing is that I want to have happen. Usually I'm just like, I want this experience. I want it to feel like this because feelings are a lot easier for me to dwell in. And I think they get delivered a lot faster. So if I'm like, I just want a lot of delight and I want to just laugh about things and feel loved. And that's what I want to experience more of. That is easier to show up and I can start recognizing it way faster where I'm like, Hey, my kid came home and gave me a huge hug and I feel so loved. Yay. And I just try to amplify that and go, I want more of that. Give me more of that. And then a friend comes to visit and like, Oh my God, it's my best friend. And like that amplifies and I feel really good about it. I don't have a concrete picture of, well, in 10 days, I need my best friend to arrive specifically for this amount of time. We're going to do these five things. This is where like everyone's going to show up and do things. And then I also need in the mail, this exact amount of money or this invitation to this event and da da da. Cause when I do that, it's like so easy to tally how many failures happen. Like that's so rigid. It never happens that way. But if I leave it open, like I just want to enjoy people, I want to feel loved, I want to feel connection, then I can be surprised by anybody. I can be surprised by anything. I mean, I can feel loving connection to the squirrels outside in my yard now. And honestly, it's a much happier life. (laughs) It's just nicer to be able to uh, be open to receiving without worrying about how the package looks or what's even in it. Oh, so... If you have been living up to unreasonable expectations of yourself or others, if you're caught in a grind where you're realizing like you're just, you have that stress bell going off constantly, feeling like whatever you're doing either isn't making a difference or it's not how you want to live your experience of life, I would offer you to have some grace with yourself and just go, okay, self, I love you and I'm sorry we're going through this incredible bullshit at this moment. And it's unpleasant. What do I need? What do I need? And allow yourself to be in that moment. And sometimes what you hear will surprise you. Sometimes it'll be like, I actually, I want you to quit your job or like, this is just insane. But other times it's just, could you just, you know, stop for five minutes and take a breath? Like maybe go get a cup of tea by yourself for a minute and chill 
Like sometimes what our deepest heart wants is so simple that we don't even hear it because it just seems too easy or too small. But I can almost guarantee all of you listening, if you ask yourself that, like, what do I really need or want right now? There's probably something that's so easy for you to provide for yourself that you almost want to laugh and be like, oh, it's not even worth doing because it'll only take me a minute or two minutes. <laughs> it's not even, it's not that big of a deal, but I would offer you like, it's the hugest deal. And it's you saying yes to yourself. It's saying yes to exactly what your heart desires. And the more you can do that, the more you're amplifying your actual desires, your actual goals and making them manifest in the world. And I want that for you. So go out there and do something nice for yourself. And I will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love, and I'll see you next time.